James here with a quick video to help people to understand how to lighten up your load when you're trying to edit in Adobe Premiere. I'm using CC 2017 version 17.1, something like that, so it's pretty up to date for uh, June of 2017. Now, the reason I'm doing this video is because somebody said that they were using a Mac and it was struggling to edit in Premiere, it was dropping frames. Now. I've got a pretty beefy system, but even my beefy system, which is a Xeon 6-core uh, 12-thread machine running uh, dual GPUs, even that will struggle to play back 4K footage with effects on. And by effects, we just mean, like this clip here, if you go up there and you go to the effect control, what we mean is Lumetri Color. So Lumetri Color or however you say it, Lumetri, Lumetri, <laughs> I don't know, if you turn it off, see, I'm just adding colour correction, and by adding that colour correction, that's a big strain on the GPU. Now, it can play that back on the timeline, real time, with just that effect, but nothing else. So let's have a little quick look now. There you go. Pretty smooth. That's at half quality. I'm going to turn the music off because I don't want any copyright issues, so let me just turn that off. This is at half quality. This is at full quality. Let's see if it plays now. There you go. Now it struggles when the titles come on. And once the titles are gone, if you play it again, it should be back to normal. Now what you notice is down here on the timeline, there are different colors. Now these colors denote whether the processor is going to struggle during those effects or not. So um, yellow is not bad. Green is perfect. Red is bad which means it's not going to play that real time. Now the person in question was saying, "Oh, I'm adding I'm adding a color effect and then a title effect and then another effect on top, stacking them on top and on top of of this." Now there's no way that that's going to be able to play even on the most beastly of systems. I mean, I don't think there's any way that they're going to play real time. Um so don't worry, you know, you're not you haven't got a crap machine, you may not to up, need to upgrade your machine. Here's what you do. Now I'm going to simulate what this person is doing. So let's bring it back here and let's add another effect on top. So um let's go into the footage. I'm going to make a cut mark and a cut mark so you can see where I'm doing it because I don't want to add it to the whole of the timeline. I just want to add it to this section here. Okay, so let's zoom in a bit more. Now this bit here, you can see all all we've got at the moment is a color effect, a Lumetri color effect. But let's add something else on, on top as well. Um, so a video effect. Let's get something quite, quite nasty. Um, yeah, so I'm going to add Hollow Matrix, which is a... Uh, one an effect that gives you kind of like the matrix or star wars effect there you can see it's adding it onto the onto the titles so it's not adding it onto the foreground i've just added it onto the titles but see what it's done here on the timeline it's all gone red now which means there's no way it's going to play back that at real time let's give it a go hit the space bar and it's just jerk 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 it'll play it frame by frame but it still has to catch up so if you can play frame by frame it'll catch up there's no way you're going to play that real time. Now this is where previewing comes in. Okay, so what you do is you put it to the beginning of the area you want to preview and you press the mark in and you take it to the end of the preview area and you press mark out. Now this area is selected for whatever type of rendering or preview you want to do. Okay, all you do is you hit enter on the keyboard and it will calculate that area. What I tend to do, I prefer to use this function called render into out, which means render from my in point to my out point. Render into out. Okay, and then it calculates everything that's going on in that section and it will then turn green because it's now all rendered. And you can play that and it will place back smoothly. Now bear in mind, if you do any, see it's playing back perfectly now, perfectly smoothly with the effect on there. Okay, so anyone who thinks they've got a slow machine, you know, that's basically what you might be missing. You're not doing the previews for heavy stacked up effects areas. Okay, the more effects you add, you know, I can add glitch effect, 
I can add a carousel effect. You know, let's have a look at what happens now. You know, I've got glitch carousel. I've got all these effects. Now, if you render that, again, it'll play back perfectly smoothly. I've got Lumetri, Holomatrix, Carousel and Glitch. That's four heavy effects. And provided you're prepared to spend a few minutes doing the preview, it will then start to go smooth. But I'm still working with 4K footage. Now, 4K footage is quite heavy on the system. So there's a way to lighten that down as well. OK, you're still editing 4K footage, but you're not needing to see the 4K on screen live. You just know that when you render, it's going to come out perfectly at the end. OK, so there we are. There's the effects I've added on to my titles. OK, and it plays perfectly smoothly. OK, doesn't matter. Look how many effects I've got up here. You've got Hollow Matrix, Carousel, Glitch. You do a preview, it plays nicely. OK, let's have a look at what's known as proxy files. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another piece of footage into the project, which is 4K. OK, I'm going to add it in up here above. Let's have a look at it. There you go. So it's me walking through a building with a camera. OK, let's turn the audio off, mute the audio. OK, so we've got that now running. And it's playing OK on my machine because my machine can handle it. But if it's not working very well or if I've got effects and it can't handle it, let's put an effect on there like um, let's copy the Lumetri from this one. So Lumetri color, let's copy it and paste it into this one. OK, so you've added a color effect now. There it is on off now if I try to play it now let's see what happens uh, it's still managing it because I've got a pretty good system let's put some more effects on there let's um, put a VHS effect on it now it's all gone red now it won't play it okay now I'm not gonna I'm not gonna preview I'm not gonna preview that effect at all so I'm still gonna leave it red but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply a proxy now what a proxy does is it allows you to view on screen and edit on screen with lower quality footage but that lower quality footage will then render if you do a final render will render out to a file which is full quality now this should allow you to rent to to put footage on your timeline which is 4k 5k 8k you know 8k footage is movie quality smoothie cinema quality now no machine can handle 8k footage playback I mean you know you'd have to have some machine you know that we we don't know exists to be able to do that so what you do is you do the proxies first so it's really simple all you do go up to your project find that bit of footage so if you right click on this and you say find that bit of footage I've just put on reveal it in the project it goes there it is and it marks it out for you so it shows you so I'll show you show you again right click say reveal in project and there it is that's the clip so it highlights the clip that you need that's giving you the trouble. Right click on it and say, somebody's sending me lots of messages on my phone, say create proxies. So you right click, you go down to proxy and you say create the proxies. And it says what qualities do you want? Now I choose the lowest quality, the smallest files, so they'll play back the smoothest. Okay, now you've got a choice. Where does it store the proxy file? Does it store it in your Premiere folder, which is on your main C drive? Um, many people are recommended not to store things on their main C drive but to use other drives and um, I do that I keep it next to the original media in a proxy folder so we say OK we'll do that and then automatically it'll fire up you can see it's firing up down in here now media encoder a media encoder won't even need your permission to start it'll just go straight into making that proxy file okay so let's have a look at media encoder when it comes up and watch what it's doing Come on, Mr. Media Encoder. There you go. It's firing up. It's a little bit slow because I'm doing the capture. But it doesn't even need your permission to start. Media Encoder will just go straight away, bang, and start to create that proxy file. So I'm going to come back in a second once it's created the proxy file, and we'll continue. OK, so we've ingested the footage. And if we go back into Premiere now, completely transparently we don't realize because nothing's changed on the timeline okay there's no indication that the proxy has been made but the proxy is there now in order to view and edit with the proxy you have to turn proxy mode on which is this button up here toggle proxies 
If that button isn't present, you can add that button by going into the button editor, finding the one that is toggle proxies, which is shaped like that, find it in the button and pull it onto the timeline and press OK. Now you've got your toggle proxies button there. Now, what this does is if I push it, it goes blue. OK, and a strange thing happens because normally it will show you black bars at the edge of the screen, which I think it's just about to do. There we are, the black bars at the edge of the screen. Now these black bars and this blue help you to know that you're looking at proxy footage. If you're not looking at proxy footage, the proxy footage will, the, the normal footage will go all the way to the edge of the screen. It's just a little way of kind of no, letting you know that this footage here is in fact proxy. So, now what does proxy do? Well, we were, these pieces of footage were 4K. The proxy footage that we're now looking at is actually 1K. But when we render this project out, it won't render from the 1K files, it'll render from the 4K files. So it makes you not make mistakes. It makes you render the correct quality. And it doesn't matter whether you're viewing it in full quality, which is like this, or if you're viewing it in proxy quality like this. Yeah. Now then, what do you think? Will it play better in proxy mode? with all this stuff going on, or will it play better without proxies on? I think we know the answer to that, but let's give it a go. Okay, so I've basically brought this footage down so you can see there's two clips, the new 4K clip with color correction, the titles, and what I've done is I've taken off the Hollow Matrix carousel and glitch because it's just too crazy, there's too many effects there to try and play real time. But let's take it back and see if we can play two 4K clips and one title both of these clips have got color correction in them. Okay. Now this is not in proxy mode and you can see it's getting a little bit jerky. Okay, so let's try it again, but let's turn the proxy mode on. So we're viewing 1K footage now in both instances. This clip and this clip are both proxied. Okay, so if we turn on the proxy mode, let's see whether it plays any smoother. And you notice the black bars coming in each clip to, to tell you, yes, you are viewing proxy footage, but let's see, does it play better? Yep, no jerking. It can handle it better because it's a quarter of the load. It's a quarter of the load of what it was trying to do. So that's what proxies do for you. And when you come up to render, if you go to render, um, remember, it doesn't use the proxies when it renders, it uses the full quality footage. But if you have created previews, and you've taken the time to render out those previews, click the tick previews box and it will save you a lot of time because it will just pick up those previewed renders that you've already done and will save a lot of time. So if I wanted to make sure that these bits here, these two red bits were pre-rendered, I'd hit enter. It calculates just those bits there and you can see green and green. And now it doesn't, it doesn't jerk when it goes past those bits. So let's have a look. Okay, you just have to get used to the fact that this these black bits are there. They won't be there in the final edit. That's just to warn you you're viewing proxy footage. But does it does it jerk? Nope, no jerking at all. No jerking. And if we go back into normal mode, these green bits will still be there. It might jerk a bit, but it's not going to jerk where the previews were because the previews make it smooth. It just jerks in trying to play back full screen. Yeah, so that's what previews and proxies can do for you if you've got an old spec machine and you want to edit 2K footage, 4K footage or 8K footage on a really old spec machine. Use proxies and use previews and you can probably get away with it. And one final tip before I forget, go up to sequence, sequence settings and turn off composite in linear color. It does warn you it requires GPU acceleration or max render quality. Now, Adobe Premiere 2017 does seem to turn this on by default, but if you haven't got a good GPU, turn it off, it lightens the load. Okay, and the other thing you can do is not to import MPEG-4, which is known as H.264. That type of footage, which is quite common on video cameras and phones, um, is quite heavy on the processor, having to uh, scrub the timeline and play back real time. 
if you want to lighten the load even more from using MPEG-4 footage, convert that MPEG-4 footage first using the export media. So drop it on the timeline and then just export the whole MPEG-4 clip, the whole thing, and export it out as DNxHR. This this setting it's DNxHR, DNxHD, MXF, and this is a format of video which has been specially optimized and works really well inside Premiere certainly on a PC I would imagine probably so on a Mac as well and if you convert to either that format or on a Mac you'll have the option to convert to ProRes as well both of those formats DNX HD and HR MXF this one here or ProRes are very light on the processor so require a lot less processing and GPU power in order to play back on the timeline. Now the downside is they will create absolutely humongously large files. Okay, so you need to have a lot of hard drive space. Um, we're talking 10 minutes might be 50 gigs of space, whereas 10 minutes of MPEG-4 might only be, you know, half a gig um, previously. But anyway, if you convert it to this footage format first and then pull those MXF files back onto the timeline, I can pretty much guarantee you that um, it will lighten up the load a hell of a lot. And you can create proxy files from those MXFs as well, so that will lighten it up even more. So hope that helps, and uh, for multi-camera edits, it's absolutely essential. So thanks very much for watching, and if you like this video, please thumbs up, like, and subscribe.